Thank you. Thank you very much for, for coming out um, and braving the weather uh, to be with me. I'm always excited to have the opportunity to be able to speak um, informally um, outside of the asana room which, where there's a different energy and a different expectation. Um, my guess is the one thing that many of you in this room would be interested in hearing me speak about is the work that I do with Off Manage the World and my commitment to service um, in regards to how it impacts us both on a national level and as an, on an international level and how you all can ultimately get involved. Um, this work is very, very important to me and it's the only thing at this point in my life that truly makes sense. It's really that now what? After I'd been doing yoga for a while, and I've been doing yoga since I was 19, and now I'm 44, so it's uh, 25 years. And many of those years, yoga was really about me, my health, my life, my happiness, my commitments, how it's going to improve my relationships. And I don't want to discount that as not being an invaluable part of the process. It was. But there was a point where something shifted, where suddenly, in my heart, I couldn't help but think that it's not such, so much about how yoga is supposed to change me, but it's how I'm supposed to use this practice to help to change and impact the world. And that revelation wasn't even scary. It just seemed so organic and natural. It was like, of course, that's what this is all about. Yoga is about integration. It's about holism and this understanding that everything is interdependent upon the whole. It's union. And the yoga practice taught me tools. I don't want to say taught. It teaches me tools that I have a choice to apply in the conflicts and the crisis that are within my life. Uh, sometimes I choose to apply them, sometimes I choose not to. Um, and when I choose not to apply the tools, um, havoc gets wrecked and people are angry and I gotta say a lot of I'm sorry's. But when I do apply the tools, um, I'm able to take responsibility for all aspects of my life. And there was a point where uh, I realized that I had these tools, that I could deal with my conflict, I could deal with my crisis, um, that I was happier, and that I was healthier, and that I was more excited about the experience of my experiences within my life, even if those experiences were challenging or even downright bad, that there was still an, this, this belief that everything is unfolding exactly the way it's supposed to, and that I am exactly where I'm supposed to be, and that my soul is transforming with each experience, and that I'm actually magnetizing certain experiences to me, not because I'm being punished or because I'm bad, but because I'm being initiated into another level of understanding. And there was a point where I thought, well, what do I do with this light? It just seemed wrong to contain the joy inside my own heart. And it was like, oh, right, we're supposed to share that. This is what yoga is all about. And as I began to evolve a little bit more on the path and started to look outside of my life and my relationships and at the world in its totality, um, I couldn't help but think that it was so obvious why the conflicts were arising the way that they are, including war and violence and all the things that we're doing to our uh, environment and even more personal uh, heartbreaks, uh, which is such a... a, a not a great word to use for what I'm about to say, but for things like rape or illiteracy uh, or poverty. Everything that's happening out in the world is happening because there is this perpetuated sense of separation. It really comes down to that, that we are existing upon this planet as if there is an other, including with our earth, as if the earth is disconnected from us. Um, so there's a me and a you, a us and an, a them. And it became really apparent to me that uh, what's happening out there is not being done to us, we're creating it because it's a manifestation of our collective thoughts as a global family. As long as we keep perpetuating this idea that there's separation, we're going to keep manifesting this level of uh, dysfunction. And so it comes back to the yoga. And then this is, it's kind of a, it's both exciting and it's also a bummer because I realize that if I really want to create peace, and I do, you know, we embody this for too short of a time. And when I say this, I mean spirit. Um, and every one of us in this room are so utterly blessed. The fact that we get to have this conversation right now is a privilege. That we get to sit around and say, what is truth? What is God? To whom will I serve? How will I show up? How will I heal? This is a luxury that I never want to take for granted because I have seen firsthand how most people in this world have to exist and they, they exist trying to survive. They exist in, in, in pain and loss and suffering and in things that none of us in this room will ever, I, hopefully, ever have to experience. And so when I recognize that reality, um, what I 
realized is that if I want to change what's existing out there, the sense of separation, the first course of action is I've got to change what's in my own heart, meaning I've got to do the work on me to transform the places in myself where I'm disconnected from another. Because if I'm living in that limited belief that there's a me and a you, then I'm a part of that problem. So if I want to heal that, the real work of action, the real course starts right within. And it's so hard. I would much rather point my fingers at our leaders and say, you need to behave differently so that we can have a happier, healthier planet, et cetera, et cetera. But it's not working, obviously. A lot of our leaders, they don't have the tools. They still function in this idea that success is power. And if, for there to be power over, there needs to be power under. And that means separation. And so when I look at the yoga community, I'm kind of freaked out in a way because A, I can't believe that I get to be a part of this community. I don't know what I did in another life to deserve this. I don't know what you all did uh, either. But we get right now in our lives to be a part of a broader conversation that is all about inclusivity, the opposite of separation. We are almost, we're being schooled and we've been being schooled now for years, some of us in this room, me 25 years. Um, there's no reason I should be practicing yoga. It's just not part of my culture. It was certainly not a part of my upbringing. There's no reason for many of you in this room to have been attracted to this practice. Yet, like myself, I bet for a lot of you when you walked into your first yoga class, it was like someone was speaking to your soul. It was like someone was reminding you of something that you knew in your heart but had never been able to articulate. That was my experience. And for me, this feels very, very karmic that somehow we are being provided very interesting and mystical information that is preparing us, cleansing us, so that we can help show up in the world and re-educate our children and engage in our community and do what needs to be done in order to create this broader sense of change that I'm talking about. It kind of freaks me out, both the responsibility of it and how organic and natural it all seems to be playing out. Do you have a sense of what I'm saying in your own lives? Yeah. Um, so with that, the yoga practice provides these tools so that we can see a bigger picture. And what this picture is, is that we are here to learn what love is. It's samadhi. Samadhi is enlightenment. It's, it's the bliss. It's that, uh, the ultimate unification. And in our very limited language, it's love. To learn what love is, we also have to learn what love is not. And this is part of the challenge of what it is to be alive in the world. Our hearts get broken. People we love will die. Things will happen that are incomprehensible to our soul. Yet all of these experiences also teach us compassion and understanding and patience and provides us the wisdom that allows for empathy. And empathy is what's going to change this planet. So if I don't love me and my journey, how am I going to love yours or yours or yours? If I'm judging me and, and my journey, then I'm going to slaughter you, I'm going to judge you, and I'm certainly going to take you down. Because you're going to expose things that I can't stand in myself. So I'm going to have to reject you because I'm rejecting me. The yoga teaches us how to really look at the fullness of the human experience and celebrate all that is revealed as ultimately holy and necessary for the evolution of each of our individual souls. And when we can begin to heal this, what happens is we start to look at our relationships in a very different way. The bad things that happen, we start to recognize that mm, maybe on a human level, there's, it's a, a, an ego level, it's a challenge, but our soul, bring it on. Our soul wants these experiences, it's hungry for it, because the soul recognizes it's these limited beliefs that we're embodying that's keeping us from ourselves, from each other, and from God. So our soul wants all the experiences that are gonna trigger our deepest fears or our deepest wounds. Yoga brings all of this to the surface, and it does it because, because there's no separation. Everything we think, feel, or experience has an effect on our physical body. Our body remembers everything. So even though our heads might be able to reconcile events, we're very logical and reasonable, we can approach things through our five senses, our bodies still hold on to the trauma of the three-year-old, the, the loss of the six-year-old, the grief of the 12-year-old, the heartbreak of the 16-year-old, and so and so and so. So that emotion, rage and, and unresolved grief or guilt, those emotions are vibration and those vibrations have no place else to go but back into the body and it manifests as stress, tension, and anxiety. Tension, stress, and anxiety affects all of the systems of our body, especially our immune and our neurological, and it leaves us available to both illness, but more importantly, depression. 
So if I don't feel good physically or emotionally, how can I be present to you, to you, to you? How can I look at my experiences as divine? So when you come into my life and I magnetize a relationship that exposes the piece of me that feels I can still be rejected, I'm gonna blame it on you. And I'm gonna to say to the universe, I am a victim. Therefore, I'm gonna keep magnetizing this until I understand that you're not an other, that you and I came together to do very deep spiritual work, both of us, that you are my teacher, and it's the divinity and the relationship that was meant to expose the places within myself that are disconnected. So when I can recognize who you truly are, I can heal. When I can heal, I can remember that we're actually united. And when I have that recognition, the planet begins to heal. This is the work that we all have to do, and it is a bummer. It's so much easier to blame you when I don't feel good. It, this is what I was taught. My mom taught it to me, my grandmother taught it to me, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is what's in our culture. You are wrong, I'm right. In yoga, it doesn't work that way. Spirit's saying, really? Because I think that God might like, love you as much as God loves me. And I think that you're he here to heal in the same way I'm supposed to. And that both of us are meant to transcend our fears. Therefore, what happens between us, although it feels personal, is ultimately divine. So when we can go into ourselves and heal these relationships and heal the trauma that's within us, we look at the world in a very different way. When I meet trauma, I'm not afraid of it. I can empathize with it. I can get it. And I can also recognize that everyone's got their own path and their own uh, timeline of healing. Therefore, I have to stay non-judgmental, stay on my side of the street, and love, 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 and take responsibility for what that means. To me, that's what yoga is all about. So I can sit here and talk about it, or I can actually do something. Doing something is when my yoga is really challenged. It's easy to stay home and to, again, explain how the world can be this utopia. It's harder than when I have to go out into the world and I am confronted by things that are unma unimaginable and I have to love even then and I have to trust even then. The work I do in the world often puts me in environments where they're around at-risk youth. That seems to be, for whatever reason, my, my uh, specialty. Thanks, Spirit. Um, and I get to be in environments where there is an enormous amount of trauma, and there's also an enormous amount of oppression. I work with adolescent prostitutes, and uh, my judgment doesn't come towards the prostitutes, of course. It comes towards pimps. That's my... I have a very hard time staying in my center when I'm in the presence of someone who has exploited children in the way that I know that they have. I have to love even then. I have to forgive even then. Otherwise, I continue this perpetuation of separation that is the disease of the world. When I can look at even a pimp and recognize with a breath that their response to the world is a manifestation of their own unresolved trauma and the lack of tools that they have been given because of their own, the injustice that's been done to their own souls and because of the abuse that's been done to their own spirits through their family or their community. When I can hold that in my heart, I can have a different level of communication. That doesn't mean I don't get to go home and cry and scream and, and say all sorts of very unspiritual, un-yogic uh, things. I have to. Otherwise, my anger will stay in my body and it'll find other ways, probably in my relationship, to reveal itself. Yoga is a practice of cleansing ourselves, body, mind, and spirit every single day so that we can show up without reactivity in our center and coming from total love and joy. Um, this is the idea of enlightenment that we're working towards. To suggest that any one of us is going to be enlightened in this lifetime is you know, probably um, an unrealistic ideal because it's a long-term process. But empowerment can happen this moment. And empowerment happens when we can stand in the presence of humanity and say, yes, I see you, I get you because I see myself and I love you regardless of the journey that you have to take. Instead, I'm actually gonna celebrate you. And if you going down means that you get to be uplifted, I pray you go down today and I pray you stay there and I will love you in the process. That to me is what empowerment's all about. And knowing that before I can hold that space for you, I gotta do it for me first. I've got to hold that same sacred space with as much joy and appreciation. So to me that this is all this work and it was a lot of work and it did not happen in one night. For five years it was just extra chaturangas and I would rip up my mat before Shavasana and salute the teacher before she started Om Namah Shivaya Ing. And, uh, and then something shifted. And for another five years, it was very emotional, very dramatic, and then something shifted. And it moved from the individual 
to the collective, and it's really where the birth of Off the Mat into the World came from, which was my desire to want to unite the yoga community um, and to encourage you all to take what it is that you're learning on the mat and be active in engaging in a conversation, a transformation that's not just simply dialogue, it's activated through leadership, encouraging your community to come together to create projects for social change as well as environmental um, change as well. And encourage people to find out what is your passion. My passion, of course, is, is, is HIV AIDS, is sex trafficking, is gay rights, uh, is environmental issues. That's the thing that, those are the injustices that break my heart. But it might not break your heart or yours. Yours might be domestic violence. Yours might be related to cancer because perhaps that's something that was impacted within your own family. Yours might be educational. Yours might be political. Off Man Into the World wants to help to give you the tools to do the, first, the personal work, dealing with your own trauma, um, your own limited beliefs, some of the considerations in your own head that aren't yet integrated, we need to do that first. And then off the mat helps to support the more practical skills on how to take that passion into action so that you can take that purpose and activate it in your local community. And our vision is, uh, is to unify. There's 20, 30 million people in the United States doing yoga. We're spending over $5 billion a year on yoga-related products. We're an altruistic, affluent, educated, tax-paying voting community, so statistics say. Um, but if that's true, that's true, we're also incredibly powerful. And where we place our dollar, where we place our votes can be very impactful. Not necessarily because business cares about uh, our ideals or because our government cares about our ideals, but they do care about our money and they do care about our vote. And so if we were to find a way to unify, where well, we got to work together, at it, all these individual communities throughout the entire United States and the world, we're able to come together and resource we could be a community that can impact this world in ways that are unimaginable, especially if our underlying value is unification. If that's the thing that roots us, then no matter what we do, whether it's focusing on the, um, the world, or excuse me, the planet, or on education, or on politics, it's all about unification and consciousness and respect. I can't help but feel the impact that we can have. And so Off the Mat Into the World does th just that. It helps to bring these communities together, helps to establish leadership in the different communities, and then helps to uh, support the different visions or projects that are coming up. And we have a variety of ways to do that. And at the end of this, actually I'll say it now, uh, you can go speak with uh, Claire uh, and get some information on Off the Mat Into the World or go to offthematintotheworld.org and find out about our leadership trainings and the different ways that you can get involved in your own community. Um, we have yoga and action groups where we give you a curriculum where you can gather your own groups. It's over seven weeks. You meet for three hours once a week, and at the end of the seven weeks, you, through consensus, you come up with a project that's based on the needs of your community, and we help you through that process. Um, we also have what's called the Save a Challenge, and this has been our way to really model the challenges that we're asking you to go through in terms of community, but on kind of a broader scale. Um, and this is off the mats project. And we've raised over $2 million in the last three years. And what it is, is we challenge you guys to go back to your local community to raise $20,000. Each year we focus on a different culture in need and unfortunately there's a lot of cultures to focus on. We focused on Cambodia, South Africa, Uganda and this year we're going to commit our attention on to Haiti. And for those of you who can raise the $20,000, you get to come with me this year to Haiti and get to see where the money's being spent. And you get to have an experience working with grassroots organizations out in the field and the money is going to, it's not, again, not our needs. We're going and finding out what, do you, what does this culture need, what is happening, and what's going to best support the evolution and the healing of the culture. And each year, not everyone raises the 20,000, 500 here, 10,000 here. You don't get to go unless you raise the 20,000. But it's not about the, the raising the 20, it's not the 20,000, it's the process of taking on a role of leadership and learning how to work with community that really is the jewel of this project. 
all that money goes into a big pot and all of that money is used to support the different efforts. So we have felt that this is really an effective way to rally the community and we have projects that happen not just internationally, we also have a project in the United States called the Empowered Youth Initiative and we focus uh, just a few months ago, we worked with um, at-risk youth in Los Angeles focusing on the inner city gang system, uh, the prison system and the gangs, and worked with a lot of artists that are working with gang members, helping them to learn through the arts different forms of communication and also a process of healing um, that has been unavailable to them. And this is a project that we want to roll out uh, in the U.S. as well. So it's working, it's happening, and a lot of you all are already doing amazing projects also, and we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're trying to find out who's already doing something phenomenal, who has interesting resources. Some of you in this room right now, your service in the world is to raise your children mindfully and as consciously as possible, and you don't have time to jump on a plane and go to Haiti. But you might have time to go to a donation-only yoga class, you might have time to stuff an envelope here and there or to make a phone call on the behalf of someone else or to hand someone 20 bucks because they're going to come with me to, to Haiti or to whatever country we're focusing on. There are different levels of engagement depending on where you're at in your life. So don't get in your head like, well, I can't do it now because you can do something and help make this yoga make sense. Um, take it off the mat and out into the world where it really is critical. And I really do believe that it's people like me and people like you who are so privileged to be able to do what we do, to begin to activate and engage in a conversation, a transformation, because this is what is going to change the planet. Peace is not just possible, it's inevitable if we are unified. Devastation, destruction, violence, and war is inevitable if we stay separate. So the choice is really ours. And so far, the choice we've been making hasn't been working. And everything, including the way that the planet is, is evolving today, is a sure manifestation that our choices have been inadequate. So let's, let's shift it, but start here. And the first thing you need to do is to look at your relationships and ask yourself, are you living as if there is an other? And already I know the answer is yes, because you're human. So of course it is. So make that commitment, begin the process of healing. And I know each and every one of you in this room have a great story. And there's someone in this room right now that's thinking, yeah, but, meaning like, you don't know my story, Sean, and it, it, forgiveness, no. Yes, yes, there is no yeah, but. Everything happens exactly the way it's supposed to in order for the individual soul to transform. In the mystical practice, there's no right, wrong, good, or bad. There is just experience and then the opportunity for transformation. You can choose love or you can choose fear. Either way, you're not gonna do this wrong. You're just gonna have to keep magnetizing the thing that you are um, uh, suggesting. So if you're suggesting fear, you're gonna have to keep manifesting it. If you suggest love, that's what you manifest. And so stand in the presence of what your challenge is and say yes to the opportunity to grow and hopefully have the strength to choose love. When I'm in the midst of a challenge, and believe me, I am all the time, my biggest challenge of late was having watched my father die, and that was horrible. But we all have to go through it. And, and it happened in the right time frame, you know? Dad, daughter, that's the way it's supposed to happen. Tell that to the 10-year-old inside myself. My 10-year-old doesn't respond that way. My 44-year-old was like, had cancer, let's, let's walk this one through. My 10-year-old, I want my 67-year-old father here now. So my shadow came up in this process. So I had to really stand in the presence of everything that I'm talking about and still recognize that we cannot bypass life. You can't. So no matter how spiritual we get to be, Challenges will still show up and we still got to walk towards it and say, show me. Make me love even bigger. Make me forgive even big bigger. Make my heart open even more. Not in spite of it, but because of it. And when we can do that, suddenly this life makes sense. And whether we're on the planet for one year or 67 years, we can just say, thank you, God, for making this mine. So in a single breath, uh, <laughs> That's really what I want to offer you and, and my hope that when you leave uh, Wonderlust this weekend that you go home inspired to want to be more impactful in your world and don't just let life happen to you but be really intentional about your contribution 
Like I had said earlier, we embody these spirits for too short of a time to take a single moment for granted. And each and every one of us have a very strong purpose and that purpose is to love. So the question is, how will you love? How will you show up? How will you share it? How will you open to it? Will you embrace it? Will you accept it? Will you allow it to penetrate every cell within your body and let this life be transformative and good, even though it could be raw, even though it will bring you to your knees, let it still be profoundly good. And that's all up to each and every one of you and, and me um, to stand in the process of this journey. So I think that's all I wanna say about this. I'm sure someone's gonna give me a sign of like, uh, so with that, do you have any questions, any, any thoughts um, from me? Uh, about everything that I've just mentioned or any questions about off the mat. I'm curious, after you leave the country and the next year you focus on another area, do you have a follow-up plan? Yeah. On, um... yeah, we have a lot of, uh, um, we stay very much in, in engagement with the, uh, all the organizations that we've worked with, uh, follow through on the money and all of that. The thing is, we are in partnership with organizations that have long-term vision and have already had a past history in the culture. So basically what's happening is we pro they propose to us a project and we fund that project. So there's always people in place that are watching for the evolution of it. So we don't have to micromanage that. We have to pay attention to what their ethics are, of course. So we vet very, very carefully all the organizations that we work with. And they're both US-run organizations, Canada-run organizations, as well as organizations that are overseas. But they have to have been there already for a while. And uh, we have to be able to kind of uh, uh, be able to uh, see their course of evolution. On top of that, though, this year it happened for the first time, we had a group we had brought a group with us to Camp uh, Uganda. Then two people from that group brought people from their community back and went to the same places, helped to fund different smaller projects, and then reported back to us from the ground exactly what was happening, where they thought that there were some issues that that we needed to pay attention to and where things were really evolving wonderfully. So we do have, um, uh, uh, this is part of our organization is to make sure that we don't lose touch with what's happening. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have any questions? Mm -hmm. What percent of, of your donated dollars go to administration? Very, very little because the, the money that we use for administration, uh, very often you'll see me on an ad uh, for different products. And I don't see any of that money personally. Like for example, you'll see a product here at Wonderlust Hide uh, has a halter that says off the mat into the world uh, on the butt. And uh, the, money, the percentage of the money that we get for that goes to off the mat to pay for administration. So anytime you see me or any members of the organization in alignment with a product, the money from that product goes to fund the organization itself. We don't take grants, not at this point at least, because we don't want to be beholden to any organization telling us how we need to spend the money. So the majority of our money comes from uh, uh, cause-related marketing. It comes from our parent organization called the Engage Network. And maybe Claire, you can help me exactly. It doesn't go towards administration. A percentage of the money that we raise from the Save a Challenge, maybe it's 10%, mm -hmm. comes hmm? to use for in the Empowered Youth Initiative and the other national organ uh, initiatives that we have on the ground. So essentially it's 100% of the money that's being used that we raise goes towards the different projects. Um, but 90, 85 or 90% will go overseas and the rest of it will stay in the US so we can focus on projects here as well. Um, but the money for administration is getting utilized um, by cause-related marketing, and I'm hopeful it'll always be that way. You know, as long as someone wants to strap lycra on my butt, uh, that <laughs> did not sound right at all. But, <laughs> but if that's what it takes, um, as long as I can keep uh, the support of the community supporting off the mat in these ways, it allows us to be self-sustaining, and this is very important. Um, so we can take the money that we raise and put it outward. Like out there in the world, and there is a lot of tragedy out there that we 
help. But there's also quite a bit, obviously you mentioned some of it right here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And it always seems to be shifted mm -hmm. from, for, uh, for out of the U.S. Yeah. charities. I'll, I'll explain that, and that's a really interesting question. Um, one is, if you've ever gone overseas, unfortunately, the amount of trauma that exists, especially amongst young people in our third world countries, far outweighs in terms of what's happening here in the United States, if in terms of poverty, sexual abuse, illiteracy, um, lack of opportunity, not to suggest for one second that there are not pockets in the U United States that don't mirror what's happening overseas. But in the grander scheme of things, it's huge what's happening overseas and, and um, uh, especially, uh, uh, especially the, uh, the amount of sexual abuse that I see. Just on that level, but on the other level, it is sadly very hard for me to, and this is, I'm hoping this is gonna change, it was very easy for me to sell Africa and Cambodia and Haiti than it was for me to sell Los Angeles. I couldn't get people to get involved. It wasn't that we didn't want to. It was just there was no interest there. And so I hear this all the time. Well, what about the people in, in, in our own backyard? What are you doing about the people in your own backyard? And I'm thinking, what are you doing about the people in your own backyard? My plate's full. And... Uh, <laughs> But this comes back to me a lot. Uh, it's a lot of, well, what are you going to do? And so off the mat, to really get this going, we needed it to be dramatic. We needed there to be stories. And Cambodia is a good story. South Africa is a good story. Uganda, we chose cultures where there's a story that we can tell to help to get people to empathize. People don't know what's going on in the, in the, streets, in the streets of Los Angeles. It's, it's a world that's hidden, not just Los Angeles, it's Detroit, it's New York, it's Miami, it's everywhere. Um, but we couldn't get people to get involved. It took a few years to create legitimacy in this organization before we could do the Empowered Youth Initiative. And it was a beautiful, we beta tested it this year. Um, I hate those words, but uh, within the organization, we beta tested uh, and it was a success. So finally people are starting to understand that we are needed everywhere. And so we're going to be shifting our model a little bit, doing more projects. Hopefully we're gonna take the Empowered Youth Initiative into a different city every single year and focus on, on some of the grassroots efforts that local organizations are already doing and help fund them and bring you all in so that you can go to Detroit and see what's happening with the gangs there. So that you can go into New York and, and understand some of the healing practices that are happening around domestic violence or what's working or not working within the shelter system. We also wanna focus on the environment. That's another thing that's very important in the yoga community and one of our future SAVA challenges are gonna, is going to be, I think, the Nicaraguan rainforest. So that, that's out there. So it's one little thing at a time. Um, our intention though with the trainings and with the yoga in action groups is to create small circles within the United States that are focusing on local projects that impact things that are important to you. You're not interested in Los Angeles. I am because that's my backyard. But you're interested in wherever you're from. So is your community. So we want to train you to do what I'm doing here in Wichita or wherever you're from. And harness the, you're not from Wichita, are you? Okay, that would have just been weird. Uh, so that you can harness your community so that we can then impact our, our national uh, uh, needs and issues in a, in a bigger way. So what I'm hoping in the future is something like just, just what happened in, in um, the, what is the tornado belt? What is that called? The tornado alley? Mm -hmm. And all the hideous devastation that just happened to so many people in, in our own backyard are, their whole, their dreams are, have been crushed. They're starting from beyond scratch. Can you imagine what would happen if something like that happened and there are thousands of circles throughout the United States where we at, off the mat can say, okay, here's the issue. Here are the organizations that we've already vetted, that we know are doing great work. We know the money, 100% of the money that we donate is gonna get to where it needs to get. You guys trust us to have done that back end work. We go out virally and say, here's the issue. We've got two weeks to raise uh, $250,000. That $250,000 is going to go towards these six organizations so they can do A, B, C, D. Um, here are the, the suggested projects that we think you all should do. Go. 
and then suddenly you all, all out in your world, you're attracting 50, 100, 250 people in your community, but multiply that by the thousands of communities, all that money, all of that awareness going into a localized organization off the mat that you trust, um, hopefully you trust. I mean, believe me, I'm so paranoid of my own karma that like <laughs> every single dollar is accounted for. Um, so we would be able to mobilize the communities to focus on different issues, whether it was national or international like that and we would be able to be impactful in a very big way. And again, if we do that, guess who's paying attention? Our congressman, our Senate, our president are going to see who are these funky, freaky people out there who are actually creating change. Suddenly they're gonna be very interested in what we're interested in. So this is what we're hopeful is going to happen that's going to unite our national community. So we have, a, we've, we've in-house, we talk about the shadow of activism a lot and what some of the projected judgments are going to be against us so that we can eventually answer some of those questions. Um, so we're very aware of what, both of what we're doing and what we're not yet doing. Um, and you'll forgive us, I hope, of the mistakes we make because we will make many. I personally have already made a, a half a dozen that I'm not proud of, but led me to have to address certain issues within myself and within the organization that allowed us to mature. And now we don't have to address those issues anymore because we've become educated. And that's what we're doing. So I hope that in this process, you'll support us. Maybe even there's people in this room who are lawyers or who have resources that we don't have, that we, well, we have lawyers, but we're hoping like, you know, free. Uh, <laughs> to help support us so that we can be more sustainable, that are brighter than us, that are smarter. Uh, I know my talents, I know Claire's, I know Kel uh, Kerry's and Suzanne's and Hala's, all the people that run off the mat, but we also know where our limitations are and we're hoping that people like you come to the table and they're like, okay, we see the hole here. This is what's missing, this is what needs to happen and, and join with us in some capacity. Um, don't ask me to do more than I'm already doing come to me and say, here's what I'd like to do. Can you support me in that effort? That's where I can say yes. The other I think, ugh. The, uh, that I can say yes, let me help empower you to do what needs to be done. This is how we unify. So thank you for that question. Mm -hmm. One more, okay. A while ago, I actually signed up on the website for Off Mat, and I had a very difficult time navigating as to what kind of Well, again, it, this, it all depends on what your own needs are. Uh, like a lot of people come to Off the Mat and will say to me, we want to help, what can we do? And we're like, I don't know, what can you do? <laughs> you know, like we, don't, we actually don't really need help within the Off the Mat infrastructure. We need you to take whatever talent you have and go out into your community and be fabulous at that and step into your leadership position. Um, I'll tell we had this amazing woman. Uh, I love to tell the story because she's, she should be mortified by this. Uh, she's a, 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 th a doctor, a therapist. This is an educated woman uh, who, after doing the trainings and coming and getting involved in Off the Mat, uh, left me this very emotional message where she really believed that uh, she was she was no longer in her, in her calling and, and, and that needed to help off the mat and wanted to come and essentially stuff envelopes and answer phones and do like this low level work within the organization. And I called her back and said, uh, I, I, are you, I can't say it on, on what I said. Are you out of your effing mind? You are a therapist, you are a doctor. You have invaluable resources. Let us help support you in using your talents to do what you're doing in a very different way. And right now we're supporting her in creating a program on yoga and uh, her passion is related to eating disorders and, and body uh, image issues. And so we're helping her uh, formulate this uh, curriculum to support this vision. I joke with her all the time. I'm like, you, you wanna come to my house and answer some phones, doctor? Uh, so <laughs> we need to ex exploit in the best way the talents that you already have. So come to a training. That's the best way. Come to a five day training. We have them four times a year so that you can do the inner work and then you can really explore some of the shadow parts of your own, uh, some of your own 
issues related to activism and service and learn different skills. By the end of the five days, you usually have a very clear picture of what the next step is. Um, and that's really what it happens, it's in steps. That's the best way to get involved at this point or get involved in either the, uh, the Save a Challenge or the Empowered Youth Initiative. Those are the areas that we need you. We don't need necessarily, unless Claire tells me otherwise, um, the nine people that are now running off the mat into the world, we all know what our roles are and uh, we hold that space. What our jobs are is to find out what is your talent, where are you from, and what can you do uh, to be of leadership, and are you ready? Is your leadership coming from codependency? Is it coming from arrogant? Is it, becoming because, is it coming from because you want to fix it, the world? If that's the case, we probably would hold you back a little bit and watch you fight us. You know, we would want, there's the shadow. That's not the way you serve. So these are the parts that, why we wouldn't just empower everyone to go out there. We wanna see what's the inner working. This is what's going to make activism sustainable in the future, is to know what is the shadow that's motivating your choices. So reach, reach out to Off The Mat, uh, connect with, with Claire or with Kerry Kelly and find out what are the different ways, the pathways in. Uh, but it always will start with the training. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.